So the video today is going to focus on range of motion testing and orthopedic testing for the cervical region, for the neck. So after you have completed your intake, your verbal intake, your interview with the client, and they've mentioned to you that they do have a type of discomfort or pain in that cervical region, it's probably best as part of your assessment to do range of motion testing and orthopedic testing to narrow down and get a more specific idea of what kind of issue that you might be dealing with and what areas to focus on and even more specifically what muscles or even ligaments or joint capsules that you might have to address during your treatment. So we're going to begin with active range of motion. What active range of motion does is it is testing for everything. It's testing for contractile and non-contractile tissue. Kind of giving us a baseline, seeing how our client initially moves. So we're going to be looking at four types of movement for the cervical region. Flexion, extension, lateral flexion, and rotation. Communications are very important here. You need to be very specific with the client about what you want from them during this assessment process. So I'm going to start with flexion. So I'm going to have my client just look straight ahead and for me to get an idea of how the neck is moving with flexion because I want to see the degrees, I'm actually going to stand to the side of my client and I'm going to ask my client very specifically Jared, what I need for you to do is I'm going to have you bring your chin towards your chest and then as you do that I'm going to ask if you have any pain or discomfort with that movement. So nice and slow, just bring your chin to your chest. Come back up. Also, therapist, you need to be very careful that you look and see if the client is slumping, if their shoulders are coming forward. You just want pure cervical flexion. So I'm going to ask you to do it again, and I'm not going to have you, I kind of want you to bring your shoulders back. Go ahead and bring that chin towards your, or the chin towards the chest. Come back up. Any pain or discomfort with that? No. Okay. So what you are looking for is a degree of movement, uh, and you can think of the head, you can even think of the forehead, and as the forehead comes forward, we're looking at a degree. So the normal range of motion for cervical flexion should be 45 to 50 degrees. For extension, the opposite movement, the client is going to bring their head back as if they were looking towards the ceiling. Again, you want to stand at the side of the client so that you can, you can see those degrees of movement. So, Jared, this time what I would like for you to do is very slowly just tilt your head backwards like you're looking at the ceiling. Okay, okay go ahead and do that for me. All right, come back. Any pain or discomfort with that? No, just okay. a stretch. Just a stretch. All right, so I was looking at the front of the forehead, and as it tilted back, the degree of movement that I'm looking for here is 75 to 85 degrees. And so by looking at that forehead, starting here, basically if you think of zero, and moving back, 75 to 85 degrees. Then, for the next two, I'm going to stand behind my client. I'm going to look at lateral flexion. So lateral flexion, if you will remember, is when the ear just comes towards that same side shoulder. So I can stand here, and this way I can see how the head is moving in this direction. So Jared, if you will please, I'm going to have you bring your left ear towards your left shoulder. Nice and slow, please. All right, come back to center. Any pain or discomfort with that? No. Nope. Okay. So if he'll do it again, go ahead and come back into that motion for me. You'll notice if you kind of looked, his head came to about 40 to 45 degrees. So that's your normal range of motion here. Come back. If you want, you can also look at that motion from the front of the body, from the anterior side and kind of look at the nose and how the nose dips too. But you can kind of see it from here as well. Last action for the neck is rotation. So I'm going to just have, just so you see rotation, I'm going to have Jared again look 
he's going to turn his head and kind of look over his left shoulder. So go ahead and do that for me, please. Okay. Okay. So this is rotation. This is what we're looking for. Come back to center. And normal cervical rotation is 90 degrees. So if you think about this being zero and the shoulder being 90 degrees, as the client rotates their head, we're looking for about 90 degrees. So I'll have the client do it again. And again, be very specific with your instructions. Jared, um, you're just going to look straight ahead, and then slowly I'm going to have you turn and rotate your head as if you were looking over your left shoulder, please. Go ahead and do that for me. Okay, and come back to center. Any pain or discomfort with that? All right, so that is active testing for the cervical region. After you've completed your active range of motion testing, it's best to then move on to passive range of motion testing. Again, you need to be very specific about what you tell the client. Passive range of motion testing is you are going to be moving the client. They need to fully relax, let you do the work. So what are we testing for with passive range of motion? Well, we're looking at ligaments, joint capsules, things of that nature, non-contractile tissue to see if something that is not necessarily muscular is the issue with our client. So we're going to do passive range of motion. And we're looking for an end feel. We're going to move their neck into a position, provide what's called overpressure, and see if there is any pain or discomfort with that. The type of end feel that you are looking for in all of the four uh, passive tests for the cervical region is uh, tissue stretch soft. Okay, So that's what we'll be looking for. Uh, if you do move the client and they cannot move fully into that action, you know, they start to guard, their neck starts to uh, not let you move them, that would be called an empty feel, okay, or an empty end feel. So let's start with flexion. Again, I'm going to tell my client, Jared, I'm going to be moving your neck, and uh, I just need you to relax and let me do all of the movement. So I'm going to bring Jared's neck into flexion. A nice way to do that is to actually cross your arms underneath the back of the head, underneath the occiput. You do want to make sure that you brace the shoulders, because as I lift his head up, his shoulders, you know, might want to come off the table, but I really want to keep that down. So I'm going to pick his head up, and I'm going to slide my first forearm underneath, and you'll notice how I put my fingers on the shoulder here, kind of around where the clavicle is. My second forearm, I'll bring under my first one and put it on the other side. And he's just relaxed. He's letting me basically have all of the weight of his head. And then to move this into flexion even more to get the end feel, all I'm going to do is stand up, bring his head further, I'm pinning the shoulders down until I kind of feel a stop, and then I'm going to provide overpressure. One, two, three. Slowly let his head come back down onto the table, kind of support it as you bring it down. Any pain or discomfort with that? No. Okay. So then I will move on to extension. I'm just going to go sort of in the order that I did for the active testing. So with extension, remember, they would be looking back. It's kind of hard to look back on the table. Again, this is passive though. So what I'm going to do is actually bring my forearm and I'm going to place it under his neck. And what I'm going to do is push down on his forehead, push up on my forearm, and then that way I can kind of test the cervical extension in that passive test. So I'm going to just slide my forearm underneath his neck. That's going to act kind of as a lever, like leverage. Place my other hand on top of his forehead. I'm going to lift my forearm up, kind of push his head down, and again I want to do that over pressure. So about three times, I'm going to, with my forearm, go one, two, three, Bring my forearm out. Any pain or discomfort with that? None. Okay. We will move on to lateral flexion. So 
So again, lateral flexion is when the client side bends their head. So if I wanted to kind of test this left side for lateral flexion, what I will do is take my client's head, move it off to the side, and actually um, I'm going to be testing this side. So I'm going to kind of, again, do that over pressure here. Okay. So you'll cross your forearms. You want to brace the shoulder and then put your hand on the side of his head. I'm going to push. I want to provide the overpressure again. One, two, three. Release both. Bring him back to center. Any pain or discomfort with that. Okay. Last would be rotation. Now you've got to be a little bit careful when you're testing passive rotation of the neck because if you just start to turn the head you, kind of like this, you're also putting them in a little bit of lateral flexion as well. So a nice way to do this is you're going to kind of move the head slightly to the side, rotate, and a nice way to kind of make sure you're in alignment here is that the SCM is kind of lined up right with the sternum. Okay, so if I wanted to test this side, because this is the side I'm testing on, I'm going to actually bring his head that direction slightly, then rotate the head, and I can see SCM lined up with the sternum. Then I'm going to do a little bit of overpressure, basically pushing his head into the table. One, two, three. Support under the neck as you bring him back to center, and one last time, any pain or discomfort with that? None. Once you have completed your active testing and your passive testing, and you've gotten some discomfort or pain with that, it's best to probably then get a little bit more specific and look at contractile tissue. So now we're going to do resisted testing. We're really going to look at what muscles might be involved at this point. So now we have to apply resistance to the actions. Again, I'll go in the four actions that we did in that order. So for flexion, to, res to test resisted flexion. It's always good too, when you are testing an action of a joint, to put them in a mid uh, movement. You don't want to start them at neutral and then have them try to go into cervical flexion. You want to already have a little bit of flexion going on as you start the test. The other thing that you want to do is provide resistance on three different levels. So you're going to ask the client to contract with a mild contraction, a moderate contraction, and a firm contraction. Sometimes you might have uh, therapists say 25, 50, and 75 percent of your strength. The idea is to start with a mild contraction. It gets a little bit stronger. And then another important thing here is to count backwards so that you and the client stop pushing at the same time. So let's start with flexion, resisted flexion. So I'm going to take my client's head and kind of bring him into slight flexion already, just slight. He is, in a moment, going to push his forehead down, again, as if he was looking at the floor, and I'm going to provide resistance on his forehead. The other hand, I'm going to just kind of cut back here on the occiput. So, Jared, when I say go, I'd like for you to try to push against this hand, uh, just starting with a mild uh, contraction, please. Okay. Right. Go ahead and push for me. Go ahead and do a little bit more. That's moderate. And a little bit more. Three, two, one, and relax. Any pain or discomfort with that? None. Right? Something that we might be testing if you're wondering what muscles. We could be testing SCM anterior scalene, because anterior scalene is a cervical flexor as well. So, after we've tested flexion, let's do extension. So this time, my hands are going to be in the same position, but instead of pushing against this hand, he will actually be pushing against this hand that's underneath his occiput. So, I'll move him into slight extension, place my hand back here, this one here, and again, 
Jared, we're going to start with a mild contraction when I say go, and this time it's like you're going to be looking at the ceiling. Okay. okay. Ready? And begin with a mild. Give me a little bit more. A little bit more. Three, two, one. Relax. And again, that countdown and relax allows us to both stop that movement at the same time. Any pain or discomfort with that? No. Okay. <clears throat> so then I can stand behind him, and then we're going to do lateral flexion and rotation. Again, you're going to have the client go into a small uh, little bit of the action and then provide the resistance. So let's say that we're going to test this left side on my client. I'm going to have the client come into a slight degree of lateral flexion. I'm going to keep this hand against the side of his head. I'm going to keep his shoulder on this side braced because as he pushes on this hand, I don't want him to try and raise this shoulder up. So I'm going to have this hand here, hold the shoulder down. Again, Jared, when I say go, we're going to start with a mild contraction and then increase it as we go. Okay. So if you would start to push into this little, uh, hand, a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger, three, two, one, and relax. So with lateral flexion on this side, we could be testing levator scapula over here. We could be testing upper traps on this side. Uh, and we could be testing scalenes on this side for lateral flexion. So last, we're going to do rotation. Again, I'm focusing on this left side. So I'm going to bring my client into a small amount of rotation. You're going to keep your hands on the side of their head. He's going to be pushing against this hand, so he's going to be pushing this way. Again, it's going to be the mild uh, contraction, moderate, and firm. And so I'm going to place my hands here. Again, uh, Jared, when I say go, please push into this hand on the left side of your head and begin. A little bit more. Firm contraction. Three, two, one one and relax. Come back to center. Any pain or discomfort with that? No. Oh. Okay. So if we kind of look at maybe what muscles we would be testing there, if we were doing left cervical rotation, we would be testing levator scapula on this side, SCM and upper trap on this side. 